Warning! This program is a mix of sarcasm, jokes, and actual advice. Stupid guys are not responsible for loss, 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 priority, depression, or death of you due to the information presented. This film was not approved by an intelligent person in the Dota community. It is not recommended that you watch it or take any of its advice. You have been warned. Enjoy! Hey there, my name's Sir X and Slex. If you want to skip all this intro shit, you can click right here. That will bring you straight to the guide. Now I know what you're thinking. You're sick of seeing my ugly face. So am I. I gotta edit these fucking videos, but until my new computer comes, I can't really make anything but these dumbass things with this stupid ass background. Beautiful background's beautiful, by the way. Whoever made it, I stole it off the internet. Can't do anything else. I'm bored out of my mind. I thought I'd make you guys another fucking guide. Uh, well, once again, these guides are centered around support players in the low trench of the MMR. It's designed to get you out of the trench, use advanced tactics, and teach you shit that you never thought about thinking. Outside the box. Anywho, let's get right into it. Today, our guide is uh, shitty guides consumables. Uh, that's right, consumables. The shit nobody cares about. I know you heard that title and you th said that it's fucking stupid. You can't write a guide on consumables. No, yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about. We're not talking about the fucking band of elf skin. No, that's too complicated for this movie. We're gonna talk about that next week in a one hour feature film. Uh, but today, we're gonna talk about consumables and teach you shit you never thought you'd know about. About the world of consumables. Now, consumables are your bread and butter as a support. We're gonna go through each one of them uh, in a specific order that they appear in the game. And this is shit is important. I guarantee you'll learn something new today that will help you improve over uh, your enemies. So, sit back, relax, get goosey, loosey, goosey, and let's get into the world of consumables. Okay, stop, 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 stop. It's it it, it it's me from the future. Well, from te technically not. Your future, this would still be the past. It's the future for me. I, I already edited this movie. I'm, it's after I edited the movie. Uh, hi. This movie's long as ass. It's, it's fucking 50 minutes long. It's consumables, the feature length film. And nobody was gonna wanna watch that. So I, uh, I made a, you know, a little something. I made your buttons. And click these buttons, it'll bring you to special places in the movie. Uh, if you're experienced, I recommend you skip Clarity and Tango. Because that is the most boring parts. Uh, the rest of it's great though. You just click any one of those buttons. Now, because of a time d distortion dilation, the buttons will go away after this little clip is four in the morning. I'm not gonna put the buttons in the rest of the fucking movie. But uh, you can click those buttons to skip to what you wanna do. Yeah, if you wanna watch the entire movie, if you wanna watch consumables, the feature length film, you can click right here. But I mean, you'd have to be psychotic. So. There you go. Click a button. Yeah, en enjoy uh, your journey. Consumable number one, clarity. I'm not gonna waste your fucking time. If you don't know what a clarity is, you shouldn't be watching this video. It's a fucking clarity. You buy it for fifty dollars. It gives you a bunch of man. Uh, uh, the exact number I think is like 125. I don't know. Anyway, clarities are important. Why? Well, because they give you man in the early game. Now I know a lot of people aren't too big of a fan of clarities. They'll buy about one. But remember. As a support player, you're not just trying to make sure that you're successful, you're trying to make your teammates successful. So what do I usually do? Unless I'm a certain hero, I'll usually start off with about three clarities. Now, why do I pick up three cl clarities at the beginning of the game? Typically, it's because my carry doesn't know how to manage his mana. I want to be able to make sure that the guy I'm laning with does extremely well, assuming he's not an idiot. If he is an idiot, I'll just store those clarities myself. Now, clarity is not the most expensive item. They cost about 50 bucks, which is about one last hit. If you pop a clarity and you get a last hit, the clarity paid for itself. But uh, what's important to note is that they allow you to spam. Now, spamming is a double-edged sword, baby. You spam too much, you pop too many clarities, you're going to push the lane, you're not going to get as much XP. You don't spam enough, and the other team is going to run all over you. So it's a very simple balance, which we're going to see a lot in this consumable guide. So really, the only thing I can talk about with clarities is that you're able to give them to allies and yourself, and it helps you out a lot in a niche situation. And also, if you want to go beyond the meta, which we're going to talk a lot about playing with people's minds, clarities can be used uh, to uh, make enemies want to attack you. Is this useful? Not really. Not, not really at all. But, uh, I mean, don't forget, if you pop a clarity, the enemies are probably going to want to hit you. I don't know how that's going to help you. I mean, we're, we're not fucking Navi. One mistake doesn't make us pop on the enemy team, so fuck it. Clarity is not that interesting. Don't be disappointed. We're going in order. So, of course, clarity has to come first. I'm sorry. Just keep watching, I promise, it gets better. Okay, number two, tangles and salves. Now, a lot of times people come up to me and they say, Slacks, uh, which one should I buy? Tangles or salves? Okay, nobody ever says that to me. Usually in a pub game, people will say, me mid. That's not a fucking question. I don't know why you put a question mark next to it. But anyway, so no, usually people will not say, should I get a tangle or salve? But let's talk about it anyway, because we're smarter than most people, right? That's why you're watching this movie. 
Okay, the choice between a Tango and a Healing Salve is a very complicated issue that we will run down by describing what each one does. Now, Tango, you get four of those and they have healing about 115 HP. Uh, healing Salve costs a little bit less than a Tango, but you get healed for 400 HP, which is actually a little bit less than the Tango's, but you get it all instantly. So, what is the difference and why should we buy one over the other? Well, let's get into it starting off with the Tango. Tango, once again, if, if you don't know, if you want me to tell you what a fucking Tango does, then you probably shouldn't be watching this movie. Go watch my first Dota by some fucking guy, because this is, this, you gotta have a little bit of experience to know what the fuck I'm talking about. But anyway, so a Tango, what does it do? It takes two of the Tango, you eat a fucking tree. It doesn't matter how big the tree is, by the way, you eat any tree, you get the same amount of health back. Just, that tricked me the first time I played Dota, trust me. So what are, what, are, what are the benefits of Tango? Well, let's get into it. Well, number one... Tangos have the unique ability to, to uh, destroy trees. This is extremely useful uh, in the lower levels. Okay, let me tell you something a little bit called what we call juking. We call juking in the trees. Okay, people come at you. What do you do? You run into the woods. You eat a tree with a tango. You eat certain trees, and it will allow you to escape. Have little juke spots. I'm not gonna waste my fucking time showing you all the juke spot trees. Go look at my guy. That's that's not. I'm not. That would actually be helpful. I'm not here do helpful shit i'm just here to guide you uh anyway i'll show you one okay here's my favorite one secret shot eat this tree and look at you instant instant fucking gank they think you're over there you're over there great great tree Bobby die! Whoa! oh yeah it works in the lower levels, in the trench, when people see other people go into the jungle, they just assume that they've, they've disappeared from the fabric of reality. They'll go in there, take a look around, and say, oh, oh, he's, he's gone. He's, he's, he's been abducted by, I don't know, he gone. So that's the joy, that's the beauty of a tango. You know what trees to eat, you can escape, you can have a great time, and your teammates will think, I don't know, that you're a fucking, you're a fucking ghost or something, you're a phantom. Also, you can use trees to pull fucking creep camps and shit, but I ain't gonna get into that because that's complicated as ass. That's gonna be for another video. But my favorite part of Tangos is the fact that you can have four of them. Now, what does this mean? Well, as an enemy, uh, they're gonna be looking at your inventory, and that's something you should always do as a support is clicking on the enemy and see what they bring to the table. Now, if you see an enemy with like six fucking Tangos or one salve, you know exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna spam the shit out of them, try to get them low health to use that salve, and then what do they have? They don't have anything. But if I see some guy with fucking nine tangos in the bottom lane, I ain't gonna waste shit on him. I'm gonna let him just hang around, because I know it, God, he's just gonna heal himself up for the next 35 minutes. This is a very important mental uh, advantage that you have over your teammates. The ability to have that slow heal and stay in your lane is so much more important, because once they see that salve, baby, that's all they're gonna wanna do is make you use that salve, and then you're out. You gotta walk back to base or have the courier go to you. So, tangles allow you to stay in the lane much longer. And they're they're very versatile. Also, you can give your tangles to teammates. Now, this is an incredible benefit for stupid-ass carries. Because guess what? You put them on a time limit. Usually, you, as the smart person on your team, as the support, you're not gonna get hurt that much because you're never out of position. You're hanging back. Usually, you're gonna be a ranged support, throwing down shit, and your dumbass carry who bought a quelling blade and three branches, he's gonna be hitting creeps. Now, what you can do is you can pretty much give all your tangos to this asshole, and he'll know that he can only heal up every 30 seconds. Guess what? You just saved his ass because he's not going to be that aggressive. It's a beautiful thing that you can't use tangos that often. You just give them to your carry one at a time. It's just like a little dog treat. Good boy! Here you go! Here you go! Good job! And he's going to eat a tango. He's going to see that they're on a cooldown timer. He's not going to be a fucking idiot and run in there. It's a great way to control your carry like a fucking dog with a dog treat. Love tangos for that. When I have seen my carry in lane with no healing items and I start giving them tangos like dog treats, do you know how many times I've seen them successfully get ganked by the other team? Like, once. Okay, they play so passively because they see that little timer, they know I can't heal for another 25 seconds. That they play smart. They play hard. If you give your fucking carries a bunch of healing salves, they're going to be like, I'm invincible, and they'll go kill themselves running under the tower. So on the other side of the coin, uh, salves. Well, they do give you that huge, beefy uh, amount of health. But to, let's be honest here. If you're running for your life and you pop a salve and you save your life, I ain't great job, but what did that do for you? It allowed you not to die. And in the beginning of the game, what do you lose? Like fucking 100 bucks and you get a free trip back to the fountain? Who gives a shit if you fucking die in the first 10 minutes of the game? Uh, granted, you don't want to, 
but it was it worth a hundred bucks eh, i don't know maybe i wouldn't consider it so i think personally that buying salves makes your teammates go fucking bananas it makes them be too aggressive it makes them think that they could get away with too much Tangles just have too many benefits. The ability to chop down trees, the ability to keep your heroes on a leash like a dog, uh, the ability to have a big presence in the lane. Personally, I'll go almost Tangles over Salve every single time. Now again, that's coming from a lane support. If you're jungling, a Salve is a great fucking item. If you're a certain kind of hero, a Salve is a great fucking item. But as a support in a lane, Tangle all the way, baby. Don't fuck around with Salves. Okay, now before we move on, Let's talk about the ability to share tangos and those people that ask you for tangos at the beginning of the game. Okay, let me make this perfectly clear to you. Fuck those people. If you get some asshole who says, I mid, and he says, give to tango, no, we don't do that. Why is that? Okay, well, because he's a fucking asshole. Here's what happens. The worst person on your team, nine times out of ten, is gonna say I mid and then ask you for fucking tangos. I mean, why why is he asking you for tangos? Because he knows he sucks. Is he's gonna rush like a fucking uh, uh, the mask of viper, whatever that asshole thing is. I mean, he it, two tangos isn't gonna help you. That's that's two hundred health or something. It's like fucking four hits. What is that gonna do for you? Okay, let me run this down for you. If your mid takes your two tangos and they get first blooded, which is happens about 99% of the time because they're assholes, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have less ability to stay in your lane. The middle is now killed your mid. He has no rage in items. He can't stay in the lane. He's going to be walking back and forth like an asshole. Mid's going to get lost. Your lane's probably going to get lost. Your fuck the enemy mid knows that your lane's lost and he killed mid. He's going to go top. Top's going to be lost. Basically, giving your fucking idiot mid two tangos pretty much loses you the game in 9 out of 10 scenarios. I, this is not a homeless shelter. I don't give you food for showing up. Buy your own fucking tangos, asshole. Okay, but not every mid's gonna be a stupid asshole. Now, here's what I do. Whenever somebody says, give me two tangos mid, uh, I, I type one thing into my chat. I say, why? This is, <laughs> trust me, this is, this, is, this is like jeopardy for these guys. This is like trivial pursuit. If you get anything after you type in why, I'd probably give that guy your tango. Yeah, because guess what? If you type in, why do you need two tangos? And he says, oh, because I would like a little bit of uh, ability to gank the lanes and I do not buy any region items and I would like proper rune control. Give that guy your fucking tangos. Okay, give him a fucking hand job because he's going to win you the game. That guy knows what the fuck he's doing. If you type in, why do you want two tangos? And their response is, me mid. Just, no, no. In fact, what I like to do is... Wait till they have a full inventory, put a tango on the ground, and then fucking destroy it in front of their face and say, I'm not gonna stand for this shit! Don't fuck with me! That's what we call establishing superiority on the team, okay? Break their spirits before they allow you to break the ancient. Jesus, we talked about that for a long time. I see, you didn't think we'd be talking about tangos for fucking however long that was, like two minutes or some shit? Ayo. Let's move on to Magic Wand. Now, I know Magic Wand isn't really a consumable, but I gotta talk about it. It's goddamn essential, and here's why. Okay, Magic Stick. Now, I don't know if I... I'm probably gonna say Magic Wand a bunch of times. If I say Magic Wand, just know I'm talking about fucking Magic Stick. I'm not Arteezy or some shit. I don't know the difference. Ayo, Magic Stick. I call Magic Stick something called a knee-jerk item. Why is that? Because it should be your knee-jerk response to buy that shit if you see any of these heroes picked. Zeus, Batrider, PA who's spamming daggers, and uh, Bristleback. Always buy a Magic Wand. You see any of those names... On the enemy team, you buy a fucking magic wand. Why? Because every single time they use their abilities, they're allowing you to win. It's fucking fantastic. But let's get into magic wand. Well, it's a pretty cheap item, to be honest with you. I mean, it's 50 more gold than an observer ward, and it's definitely worth your purchase. Uh, let's, let's talk about why. Think of magic wand, if you will, as a seatbelt. Now, when you get into a car and you're driving, do, do you have to wear a seatbelt? No, you, you don't have to, but you probably fucking should. You know what Magic Wand does? It saves your life in that one instant where you didn't even know your life needed saving. It's an insurance policy. It's a fucking seatbelt. You put on a seatbelt every day, you buy a wand every match, is it always going to save your life? No, but that one time you need it, it's going to be there. It's going to be ready, baby. Always fucking buy a Magic Wand almost every time. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm horrible at this. I still forget to buy Magic, magic Wand, but you got to click that fucking Magic Wand, man. Almost every time, it's a goddamn seatbelt. It protects your life. Now, okay, do you really need to buy Magic 
stick, magic wand. Uh, I keep saying fucking wand. God damn it. Okay, listen. I, again, we're talking about magic stick here. Do you need to buy magic stick every game? No. Not if they don't have a bunch of people that are going to be spamming spells and shit. But almost every single time, you should be wearing your seatbelt if you're going to be driving in the Dota world, okay? And if we're going to continue this metaphor about magic wand being a seatbelt, uh, don't forget to click it or tick it. And what do I mean by that? I mean, click the fucking magic wand before you die almost every single time. If I, if you buy magic wand, you're dead, and you see that you have charges on that, you have, you failed. You've wasted your money. You've wasted all of your money. You, you gotta use those charges. If I can offer you any advice, set up a hotkey and make that hotkey, call that the oh shit hotkey. That's what I, I have for space. Anytime something goes wrong, I've trained myself to just start spamming on space. Okay? Set your magic wand to your hotkey. Under the options menu. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's a waste of my fucking time. But uh, you always need to click it before you get your ticket. Which means click that fucking magic wand. Now how do I get good at this? A lot of new players, they have problems learning to click their magic wand before they get the, the death ticket. Uh, here's my advice. Every time you see that magic wand charge on the dead screen, punch yourself in the fucking balls. I did that about twice and I never forgot to click my magic wand again. I know that it's going to hurt. I know you're scared. But just BOOM! Balsack! Just, oh, you Never again. Seriously, sometimes when you think you're gonna die, even if you don't have the wand, you'll start slamming on whatever your oh shit button is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this fucking guy sucks. Okay, alright, let's get back to it. Here's the next item. This is the most important item. If you haven't been fucking paying attention for the rest of the movie and you don't feel like paying attention after, that's fine. Just take this away from you. TP scroll. Teleport scroll. Let me lay this out in the most simplest terms that I can. If there's not a TP scroll in your inventory, you're fucking up. That's it. There should always be one there. Now, I know this sounds like overkill. Guess what, asshole? It's not overkill. Technically, you should always have two of these bitches in your inventory. Now, why is this? If you go to any, any, any pro game, any fucking pro game, and you see somebody without a TP scroll in their inventory... Then put, put a little fucking dollar in a piggy bank. Guess what you'll have after two months? You'll have nothing in there. Okay, they always have it. Why is that? It's because in the low tiers, in any tier, everyone's going to make a mistake. And TP scrolls are what we call the anti-mistake or the mistake punisher. They're there to make sure that mistakes are dealt with in some way. So... Any, especially in the lower tiers. One thing people do all the time is overextend. They'll see somebody running, they'll chase after him right under a tower. Here's a pro tip for you. If you don't catch somebody in about four seconds of chasing them, stop fucking chasing them. But anyway, we'll leave that on a different video. If you see somebody overextend and you TP scroll and you get a kill, you, you've made your money back and you've saved your fucking hero, your friend, you've sent the asshole back to base, they're an amazing item. You can jump into the woods and escape. You can be right where you need to be. They should always be in your inventory. Now, I know this seems like it's overkill. Trust me, this is not. This is the one thing that will make your MMR sore is always having a TP scroll. You will have no idea how often you'll need it, and you won't ever have to think about it. As you see all your teammates around you getting destroyed, you'll take one step back like you're fucking Batman, and you'll just poof, you'll just be gone. Do you want to be Batman? Do you want to feel like fucking Batman? Carry this shit everywhere. Well, now, why do I say always have two instead of one? Because uh, anytime I'm anywhere in the game of Dota, I do something called having an escape plan. If I'm going to do anything, my first thought is, how do I get the fuck out of this when it goes to all the hell in the handbasket? Usually, nine times out of ten, all that is is having a TP scroll. That solves your problem nine times out of ten. You're going to say, well, if, if everyone comes to kick my dick, I'm going to run into the woods and I'm going to TP out. Boom. Bada boom. You can be anywhere. So always have two. You need one for going somewhere and getting out, getting to a gank, and you need another one for getting the fuck out, okay? We're Batman. We go to the scene of crime, we kick some dicks, and we escape. All right, here's some shit you probably never thought about with TP scrolls. Number one, did you know that you can use TP scrolls on every single channeling spell? That's fucking bananas, Okay. Uh, example, as Spirit Breaker, when you're charging someone, you can use a fucking TP scroll. That's fucking crazy, okay? If you see that shit coming at you, you don't know where he's coming from. Will it cancel your charge? Yes, but it'll make you shit yourself, okay? Th this is what we call mind games, and this was what makes us better than our enemies, is by thinking outside the box. And we're gonna talk about this a shitload with consumables, because they're the best items for thinking outside the box. So, 
Here's an example of thinking outside the box with the TP scroll. What I commonly use TP scrolls for and why I recommend you have two. Fucking mind games. They are so good. Because guess what? Dota is a game about learning how to play like a pussy. I know this sounds wrong, but it's completely true. If you're playing Dota and you're not playing like a pussy, you're doing it wrong. Why is that? You should only get into fights that you know you're going to win, or else you could be farming. You should only push towers if you don't think anyone's coming. Dota trains you to play like a little bitch until you learn that you can win. Basically, you're like a schoolyard bully. You don't start shit unless you know the opponent is weaker. Now, TP scrolls are great for this. If someone is pushing your tower, pop a TP scroll almost... Eight times out of ten, they're gonna fucking run away. You don't even have to go there. In fact, if you're an invisible player and you cancel your TP right when it's about to go off, they'll think you're there and they'll run for their fucking lives because they're pussies. TP scrolls are anti-pussy measures. You know how I many nature's prophets I've had can fucking completely blow their push because I just popped a TP scroll and pretended like I was going? Jesus. It's hilarious. Here's another thing you can do for mind games. When a fight breaks out, if you want you, uh, the enemy's stuns to be focused not on your carry and you're a kind of guy who can handle it like a Tidehunter, pop a TP scroll. It's fucking hilarious. Every time the enemy sees somebody popping a TP scroll, their first thought is throw all the stuns on them. It's great. I've won so many team fights because I'll just be at like three-fourths of my health, pop a TP scroll, and suddenly all attention is pushed onto me. It's hilarious. Don't forget the ability of TP scrolls to not only garner your enemy's attention, but also scare the shit out of them. Alright, now let's talk about your dumbass te uh, teammates and TP scrolls. Nine times out of ten, when your teammates get ganked or whatever, they're gonna say, Why didn't anybody TP? Should you have TP'd? Fuck no! No, you should not have TP'd. If that idiot is getting killed under his tower, he did something wrong. It's not your job to be there to be their bodyguard. You're probably gonna get killed too if you were to do that, especially on mid. If your mid is asking for you to gank mid with a TP scroll to help him out, unless something horrible has happened, unless the enemy team has four dudes mid, you probably shouldn't go. What you should do is TP in after he dies. I know this sounds like a dick move, and... <laughs> well, you don't actually want to go in until he dies, but nine times out of ten by the time you notice he's already running for his life with two health. But you TP in after that idiot dies, you take the kill from the overextended enemy, and you just say, fuck it. I mean, y your, your job isn't there to waste 130 gold to go and try to protect some asshole who wasn't doing his job right. Your job is to win the game. So when your teammates scream at you for not TPing to help them, yeah, apologize, keep them happy, but fuck them. Should you TP to save good teammates, like a mid that's still already got first blood and shit? Yes, but you have to have your eyes on the mini-map, and you have to have a TP ready to go. And sometimes, if it doesn't look like you're going to live if you TP, it's not worth it. What is worth it, I will say, is doing that mind game. Look like you're going to TP, throw in a TP, and if the enemy starts running away, you've done it. You don't have to die for that, and you get to save your friend's life. So that, again, always have two TPs. They are an immeasurable resource to you. <sighs> Alright, smoke at the sea. <laughs> Buckling kids, you're about to learn a lot. How many times have you ever seen somebody use a fucking smoke of deceit if you're in a trench tier? Let me answer that. Uh, about twice in a thousand games, okay? Smoke of deceit is the least used item in pubs ever. Unless you're fucking great. Unless you're up in the in the clouds of, of genius land. Smoke of deceit. What the hell does it do? Why doesn't anyone buy it? And how, how am I going to convince you to, to use it? Well, here we go. You ask anybody in the Dota 2 community what Smoke of Deceit for, they're gonna tell you Smoke of Deceit is for bypassing runes and uh, succeeding in ganks. Yeah, maybe. Uh, for good teams, not for us, okay? Our teammates don't know how the hell the gank, they don't know what they're doing. And anytime you do pop a smoke, nine times out of ten, I gotta stop saying that shit. Uh, most of the time, excuse me, uh, they're not gonna do shit with it. So let's talk about what smoke will actually do for you as a support and why you should be buying that shit up like hotcakes. Smoke is so underused in pubs, most people don't even know what the hell it does or the mechanics of it. So before we get into special tricks and why you should buy it, let me just uh, fill you in on what the hell it does. Now, Smoke at Deceit allows you to appear invisible to non-hero units. Does this sound interesting? No, but it is game-changing. Now let's go over what will reveal you in Smoke. If you get too close to a tower, if an enemy sees you, and if you attack, that is it. Those are the only things. Now, what does this mean? This means that using abilities, like any one of Zeus's abilities, any one of your magical abilities, that does not reveal you. 
That's incredible. There's so many ways to use that. Have you ever played Keeper of the Light with the smoke? You sit in your lane, you charge up and illuminate, and they can't see it coming. They think that they've angered some kind of fucking mythological god. They're dying out of nowhere. They have no idea why. Great item. You can use abilities and be invisible as long as you're out of their sight. Uh, so w what can we do with that ability? What What's so important about it? Well, most will say that it's only good for getting around wards. Now, that's just not true. I mean, it has so many uses. Oh, and by the way, did you know that a sentry ward will reveal people with smoke on them, but it won't show it on the minimap? So, a lot of people will say don't sentry ward Roche Pit if they're worried about lichen or something because it can't do it. Actually, you can see him, you just can't see him on the minimap. So you, you kind of have to just be looking in that area. Okay, so anyway, in, in the high tiers, that's exactly what people use smoke for. They use it for five-man ganks. They use it to come back from the brink and turn around and have a big jump on your enemies. Well, guess what? In the low tiers, we're not good enough for that. Uh, it, it's a goddamn miracle if people are working together in general, not to mention during the smoke of deceit. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't use smoke for that because it's psychotic. It, it's, 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 a, it's a goddamn, it, it's a wish. It's an unattainable dream. I use smoke in a much different way. Alright, let's start off with the least useful use of smoke uh, for personal use. Because that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about smoke for personal use, not for team use, really. So, uh, number one, smoke allows you to uh, dodge several ultimates. For example, if there's a Bloodseeker on the other team, you should probably buy smoke. Why? Because if you're low health, he won't be able to see you if you pop the smoke. If there's a Zeus on the other team, people, you did you know you could dodge his ultimate with that? Uh, most people do not know that. Uh, I don't ever do that, though. I did that fucking once. I popped a smoke running away from the Zeus and he had a refresher orb. He made me look like a fucking asshole. So, yeah. I mean, it will make you look invisible against Triano, up against Nature's Prophet, against Zeus, against Global Ults. But, I mean, does that have a use? No, not really. Unless, I don't know, you're fucking God or something and you know when it's coming. Usually, you're just, ter you're just happy you made it out alive. Okay, here's what I use smoke for most of the time. And this is, gonna, this is probably going to blow your mind. It blew my fucking mind when I fucking did this. Anywho. I use smoke for hunting invisible people. Doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but hey, stay with me on this train. We're going to have quite a ride. Now, let's say you're on a hunt for an invisible hero. And, well, there's two ways you can do this. You can uh, go to their jungle where they're probably farming up, or you can stay by one of your dumbasses and hope that he jumps them, which, yeah, option two usually happens. Uh, here's what you do. Now, a smoke at the seat... It only goes away if a hero is in a certain amount of units from you. I think it's about 1,025, but it could be wrong. If I am wrong, I'll put it up here. <laughs> I'm always right. Now, smoke at the seat goes away if a unit is in with a certain amount of distance from you. Guess what? Dust of appearance goes a distance of 1,050. What does this mean? This means that when you're jollying around, running around with smoke and deceit on, if there's any invisible unit near you that pops that smoke of deceit and you can be seen, if you hit dust, you're guaranteed to dust that enemy. That's incredible, okay? You are suddenly anti-Ricky, you're suddenly anti-Clinks, you're anti-Maranas, you're anti-everything, and people have no idea how you know. They'll think that you're psychic. You'll terrify them. They won't even leave their base, okay? This is the greatest thing ever. Anti-asshole is what smoke is. Especially useful for Phantom Lancer. Why is that? Because only real enemy heroes or units can dispel smoke, not illusions. Late game Phantom Lancer, what's the hardest part about him? He sends his illusions into the lane, you don't ever know if he's actually in it. Pop a smoke, walk towards that lane. If you're not revealed, then Phantom Lancer ain't there. Keep walking around until you are revealed. Hit that fucking dust of appearance and boom, you got yourself one slippery cat. Smoke is used by me as anti-asshole insurance. I love this stuff. Also, as a support, I love using smoke to de-ward. Now, I know this doesn't make a lot of sense, because I told you if you attack, then uh, your smoke of deceit goes away. Here's something you can do. Uh, buy a quelling blade. Did you know that you could click on quelling blades and destroy wards in one hit? It's pretty useful, especially if the enemy team is warding up like crazy and you start using smoke. One hit, you pop in, your smoke doesn't go away. Genius! Use it all the time. Not really. It's more really situational. I've probably only done that about three times in my entire life. But it sounds pretty damn cool. Meta. Again, thinking outside the box with smoke and deceit. How, how do we be smarter than our teammates and have them do what we want? Well, here's the thing. Smoke of deceit is the only item in the game that will make your teammates gank. 
Yeah, they, they can't control it. If you walk up to a Bloodseeker who's AFK in the jungle doing jack shit and you pop a smoke at the seat, it, suddenly, like, a, a light pops out in his head and he follows you and he looks for people to gank. Do you know how useful this is? Do you know how little trench tier people gank? It, they never do it, especially not as five. It's a magical item, okay? You don't even have to announce it. You just manly up over to three dudes sitting around, pop a smoke, and all of a sudden, SWAT! They're special forces. They, they'll, do, they'll just run around trying to kill people. Smoke has a, a magical ability to make your teammates aggressive gankers that work as five if you get all five of them in the smoke. If you ever pop smoke and the guy just keeps farming the jungle, then you should probably just quit.